So a lot of this is coming together. It does make sense. What is in question are the numbers involved. Okay, well, it's an ongoing situation. Um, as you mentioned there, Tim, David Cameron has been uh, chairing a meeting of the Cobra Crisis Committee. Sky's political correspondent Glenn O'Glaza has just come back from Downing Street. What can you tell us about what happened in the meeting then? Well, the meeting started at 3 o'clock. It lasted about 45 minutes, so it broke up, what, half an hour ago. A and they don't give us a running commentary on what's discussed at Cobra, although obviously it was uh, specifically called as an emergency meeting about this incident in Algeria, uh, nor a cast list, but normally it's attended uh, by the Defence Secretary, by the Foreign Secretary if he's around, although William Hague is um, on the other side of the world at the moment uh, in Australia and New Zealand, so a junior Foreign Office Minister would have taken his place. Uh, plus senior members from the security services. 45 minutes uh, during which David Cameron would have been briefed on the latest details uh, of the situation, which as, you're, as we've been saying is, is still ongoing and still developing, and so details uh, remain uh, fairly unclear, but he would have been briefed on the latest that is known, and also I suspect on uh, contingency planning and also what the government's doing in terms of support for BP and the members of staff involved. Now, Downing Street has just said uh, at a lobby briefing that several uh, British nationals are involved without clarification of what precisely involved uh, means, but uh, the government is working through the Foreign Office to provide consular services, to provide support uh, for the families of those staff involved, and of course the British Embassy in, in Algiers is involved uh, as well. Uh, so several uh, British uh, nationals are saying involved. We don't know precisely what that means. We don't know if that means that they're being held still at this BP installation, for example, or whether some uh, might have been taken away as hostages. That situation is still very, very unclear indeed. Uh, but um, the, the main point uh, from uh, the Downing Street briefing is that several British nationals are involved, and from the COBRA uh, briefing, uh, that uh, the Prime Minister is keeping in touch with uh, developments on a regular basis and may at some point uh, choose, and perhaps not himself, perhaps through a Foreign Office Minister, to update the House of Commons, uh, but we're waiting to see how things develop. Okay, Glenn, for the moment, thank you. Our Foreign Affairs Editor Tim Marshall is still here. Um, how complicated does this become for Britain, Tim? I mean, it's several British nationals involved, but we're dealing with a number of different nationalities, yes. Algeria, France, Mali, countries involved in this There's an Irish who taken hostage, a Norwegian, five Japanese, I mean, rule the Japanese special forces out, rule a lot of people's special forces out. And also, it's worth keeping in mind that Algeria has very experienced anti-terrorist squads. They went through a, a terrible time in the 1980s and up to the early 1990s, where up to 60,000 people died in Algeria uh, as, as Islamic groups took on the state. I won't go into the background, but basically the Islamists had won the election, the army said, no, we're not having it. There was an ensuing war. And so they, they have very experienced, but if you storm in, if there's 41 hostages, you're putting all 41 hostages at risk. And so the phone lines will be buzzing now, Paris, London, Dublin, Tokyo, Washington, because the Americans will take a view. And it's extremely complicated, extremely dangerous. One last piece of information, the group that claims they are involved and they're doing this because of Mali is run by a man that the Algerian media called the, the One-Eyed. He, he's, he's a chap who fought in Afghanistan, lost an eye in Afghanistan in the early 1990s. He's from Algeria, and he formed a fighting group. He used to be in the Algerian uh, fighting group, and he went on, and he's, he's been involved in terrorist activities in Mauritania, Mali, uh, Algeria, in fact, right across the Sahel. And if it is him, he is a ruthless and desperate man, and uh, they'll be perhaps hoping it's not, because his group is particularly experienced, battle-hardened fighters who know what they're doing. It's a dreadful situation, uh, and from this distance, and with the little knowledge we have, it's very hard to see how you get out of it. Why would they negotiate their way out of it? Okay, Tim Marshall, thank you. This is Sky News coming up after the break. We have more worrying news for the high street as another firm calls in the administrators.